Welcome to a very special bonus episode of Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning, talking to our buddy Ross Fulton, the X's and O's guru at BuckeyeHuddle.com. This is the uh, bonus episode we promised you. We already did Ohio State's offense, Ohio State's defense. It is a special week. It is Ohio State Penn State week. It is the biggest week of the season so far. So we're going to do a little extra coverage for you. Ross has taken a look at Penn State. He's going to share some thoughts on the Nittany Lions, what we can maybe expect this weekend in terms of their offense, their defense going up against the Buckeyes. It's going to be a, uh, I'm guessing, a relatively low-scoring close game, but we're going to break it all down with Ross. Ross, I guess let's start with the Penn State offense because there has been so much conversation about the fact that they just, they're not getting long runs. They're not throwing the ball downfield. But they're also putting up crazy numbers of points. Now, I I think a lot of that probably has to do with their opposition so far and the fact that they are not good at, uh, what do you call it, football. But, you know, it does, it feels like this far into the season, it probably means something if you're not, if you have not been throwing the ball downfield, it probably means something at this point, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't think you can, you're you're not playing cat and mouse with being explosive. Like, either are or you aren't because like you would break if you're explosive you're just things are going to break naturally um i don't think i mean they're putting up lots of points because they're getting tons of turnovers um which you know is they're getting short fields and um, they did that against illinois they did it against iowa um you know I, I think that you have to give them some credit for that obviously we can we could get into a long discussion about turnover luck and the randomness of turnovers um but the I mean, I don't, it's not that they, they won't take shots. I mean, they try to some off of play action. It's just that they're not very, they haven't been very effective at it. Um, and again, like, I don't, I mean, Ohio State's been very stout against giving up big plays. Um, so I just don't really see that as going to be Penn State's game plan this game. I mean, I don't, not that they won't take shots, but I just think it's going to, they're going to try to, if I was going to guess, probably try to borrow a page from Notre Dame's playbook and hope that Ohio State plays them a little conservatively um, and, you know, maybe even literally borrow from Notre Dame and try to do some of that two-back run game and get get an extra hat in the box. Uh, you know, they'll use a lot of 12 personnel. Like, they will RPO and screen off of most of their plays. Um, but, again, I just I, – I see, to me, like, I, I think Penn State is would be looking for a low-scoring – slugfest and hoping that they win the turnover battle. Well, one thing that would help them try and win a low scoring slugfest would be to be able to move the ball, stay on schedule on the ground and, you know, have, have a long, you know, score, score, but score on a 12 play drive where, you know, they, they have not been super explosive on the ground, but can they stay on schedule? Can they be efficient on the ground and get to second and four and third and one get themselves in positions where they don't, it's not an obvious passing situation. Is there something about this Penn state rushing attack, either from a schematic or personnel perspective that makes you think that they might be able to run the ball consistently against Ohio state and keep themselves on schedule and keep themselves in positions where they're, you know, second and four, third and one. Yeah. I mean, they had some success last year against Ohio state using formation to boundary, um, you know, multiple tight ends. And then, you know, going back, with the combination of RPOs to the field, uh, you know, I'd expect something similar from them. Um, again, you know, I, I just think it's a, it's a matter of also how Ohio state chooses to play it in terms of, you know, how aggressive does Jim Knowles want to be? I mean, Penn state's left tackle is really good. I'm not sure the remainder of their offensive line is per, or particularly challenging. Obviously the running backs are both good, even though I don't, you know, they don't have crazy numbers this year. And so, Again, I think it's just, it's trying to create probably, um, you know, it numbers advantages to the short side of the field when Ohio State and Jim Knowles want to put their, generally put their, um, set their alignment to the wide side and then, you know, take advantage of some numbers, try to stay ahead of schedule, probably try to force Ohio State to, to you know, play it more aggressively and then see if they can maybe, maybe break something. All right. Now, on the other side of the ball, let's talk a little bit about the Ohio State offense. They have struggled a little bit to run the ball for extended periods this this year. Sounds like probably getting Travion Henderson back this weekend. We will find out all together at at 10 a.m. on Saturday when they release the availability report. But, you know, if you do get Travion Henderson back or 
if they do lean on Dallin Hayden more or, you know, whoever the running back is, this is a this is a pretty stout Penn State defense. Is there reason to think that Ohio State's going to be able to run the ball with whoever that running back is? You know, they do present some opportunities to run the football. Like there are bubbles there. Um, you know, Manny Diaz loves to slant and sim pressure and fire zone. Um, and it, it can leave them vulnerable, like particularly like, you know, using uh, unbalanced or overloaded formations, you know, put your formation in the boundary, run to the field. I do think that there's some, they, they like to play their defensive ends pretty wide. Um, you know, so I think that there's opportunities for the counter game that Ohio State's increasingly using some crack sweep. Justin Whitlock has, has pointed some of this out um, throughout the week. And so, you know, I, I do think there are run opportunities there, and I do not think it's a situation where Ohio State can abandon the run game. The Penn State's defensive tackles are a little light. Um, and so I think, I, I do think that they will try to mix and match. I, I still think that like using gap runs against what Penn State wants to do is the way to go because you can wash down some of that slanting if you catch it correctly and they're out of position then when their linebackers will be aggressive. Um, and the, but you know, I, I also do think that Ohio State is going to be pretty RPO heavy with the run game, um, and try to take advantage because there, there are some opportunities on early downs with the quick game in the middle of the field and try to hit, you know, some glance routes, um, on first and second down. Is there a specific back that you think might be best suited for what Ohio State you think is going to be trying to do today? Cause I mean, they, we've talked about, you know, hey, sometimes it's a chip train him scheme or he runs certain plays better than others or it's a Travion Henderson, you know, might be a better fit here or Dallin Hen. Is there someone who you, you think, based on what you think they should do, is there a back that maybe fits that best who's on the Ohio State roster, healthy or not? In my opinion, based on everything they've showed over the last several years, when, Tra- when Travion H- Henderson can play, they're going to lean heavily on him, uh, particularly in bigger games, like assuming he's healthy. And, you know, I, I think that some of what they've been doing with the GT counter, with the buck sweep, with crack sweeps, I think fit him because you want to get him outside, particularly like we don't know Mecca Buka status. Um, you know, Trayvon's explosive. Like you gotta, you, you gotta play explosive guys. Like I, I think they need to take a page, um, from what they figured out in Notre Dame. And like, I do think in short yardage, you need Chip or Mayan Williams, um, at, you know, on a third and one or whatnot. Um, but I, I still, I just assume that if Henderson's good to go, like he's going to be the main guy. Looking at the passing game, you mentioned the questions about Emeka Ibuka. Is he going to be able to play or not? There's sort of been some conflicting information out there about that. If you're leaning on Marvin Harrison and Julian Fleming and maybe Carnell Tate, maybe Xavier Johnson, if you don't have Ibuka, it was a huge game for for uh, Marvin Harrison against Penn State last year. I assume Penn State is going to try to take him away. Does that make this a Garrett Stover game for Ohio State? Or is there someone else that you think, you know, might be, you know, might be a big factor in the passing game for Ohio State. I, I mean, Ohio State can't let him get taken away. Um, I mean, you know, Penn State loves to, you know, you get a lot of, especially like on early downs, like middle of the field open, they'll play, you know, they, they, they like, Manny Diaz likes fire zoning, like a two deep four under and bring five. Um, and, and, you know, there's opportunities against that rotation when they, they like, like to run a two steal, for instance, and they'll rotate a guy down and, and one back. And there, there's, chances there like on third down you know they'll play more cover one they'll they they like to show creepers you know they'll bring five or six up and guys will drop some guys will rush some guys will drop to try to you know mess with your protection so i i do think throwing on early downs is going to be key um i you know i expect even with a mecca buka a heavy dose of marvin harrison in the slot and lots of motion to change whether he's the number one number two number three to that side um and, you know, I'm sure if he's in the slot, they will try to probably try to bracket him. So you want to keep them off balance. But, um, you know, I think Stover certainly, you know, they need to continue to like hit those, just like we talked about earlier, you know, those fake GT counter hit Stover on, uh, on crossing routes. Like that's a pretty effective concept. Like the more that they can continue to play action from the pocket, uh, the better. Um, you know, I, I do think that. Uh, if a mech is not available, I think we need to see a heavier dose of Carnell Tate because I think, uh, 
I think Kyle McCord trusts him and I think he provides another explosive element. You know, I think Xavier Johnson is good in sort of that hybrid role. Um, and I do think you'll continue to see that orbit motion, fake orbit motion, some plays in the, you know, I, I think that the screen game will be, uh, pretty critical against Penn State as well in terms of their aggressiveness, particularly if you have Travion Henderson, um, if you can hit a slow screen or two. But, uh, I, again, I think the key for I State is to use motion formation to move Harrison around. If Ohio State is not able to run the football, can they win this game without being, you know, plus two in turnovers? I, I think it kind of goes without saying in a close game, you know, the one big mistake, the one big turnover could swing it. But if Ohio State really is not able to run the ball and they're, you know, say under four yards a carry, something like that, can they, is there a way for them to win this game without you know, something being a little bit of an outlier in some other area? I mean, I think so. They they basically did that last year. Um, I found, you know, their plan against Penn State last year was pretty frustrating to me because they just kept running mid-zone and uh, Manny Diaz was just fire zoning it like crazy and they had no chance. Um, but they eventually cracked one. I mean, that, that's kind of the trivia on Henderson benefit, right? You can hit one. Um, and, you know, they threw their way out of it. So I, I think, you know, again, it makes it harder it's going to be a low score and it'll be more like Notre Dame if that happens. Um, and I, I do think they have better building blocks in place to run the football this year. You know, just the heavier reliance on gap runs. Like, you know, I still think back to what Michigan did to Penn state last year, by like going on balance, running power, running counter, like, and just messing with those slants. Um, I, I still think there's opportunities there to run it against a, a Manny Diaz uh, style defense. But, you know, if they can't, they're going to have to throw, I think lots of quick game on early downs. Like I would, you know, target the middle of the field, target uh, Penn State's, you know, free safety to the boundary with some flood concepts, uh, get the football out. But you know, obviously, I think Ohio State. You know, I think the the probably the worst matchup for Ohio State is their tackles against the Penn State defensive end. So you obviously want to stay out of uh, third and long situations. So whether you do that through running the football, RPOs, quick game, or probably ideally for us, say a combination thereof, you know, you don't want to leave it. So you're, you're just having to drop back to a spot every, t- every down. I don't know if you've thought about an actual score prediction, but I'm going to ask you this winning team point total over under 21 and a half. What do you think? I thought this week that I, I'd feel, I feel very confident for us if they get over 28. Uh, I feel pretty confident if they get 24 or more. I think Penn State, for a, a, I see a Penn State victory as being more like a 21 17 type game, and Ohio State is more like a 27 21. All right. So we will, uh, we'll be covering all that. We'll have plenty more coverage uh, of that in the lead up to the game. And then, of course, after the game at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle and at buckeyehuddle.com, get much more access to Ross. You mentioned some of our other scheme guys there earlier. So, We have a whole team of X's and O's guys breaking down all that stuff, making you a smarter football fan, all at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you next time.